Amen. Boy, y'all must have ate some good food Thanksgiving. Amen. Everybody, y'all just want to cut up and give God some praise. I didn't know this was that kind of church that give God praise like that. Come on, let's give, let's do it one more time for the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good and he is good all the time. Amen. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I am thankful to God that you're here today. Amen. It's so good to see you. Amen. So good to see you. So good to see you. Amen. Point at somebody and say, it's so good to see you. Even the children were praising God. I just saw the kids praising God. I said, wow, okay. Amen. Thank God. Let me know God is good. Amen. Look at your name. It's so good to see y'all, man, after Thanksgiving holiday. And I'm telling you, just so good to be grateful for what God has done in this season. Amen. Thank God for the band. Amen. Come on, let's worship God. Amen. Thank God for my wife. You may take your seat. Amen. Thank God for my wife. Amen. God definitely knows how to use her. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My first and only lady, praise the Lord. Man, I thank God for her and she, yes, she is, man. She is beautiful. Spoiled me for, she started spoiling me for my birthday already. Took me to the beach. Hallelujah. Made me drive all the way here this morning. Amen. But she said, I know how to get here though, Rick. I could, man, I, I talked to everybody on the highway. Get out the way. Why are you driving so slow? I talked to everybody. Talk to your neighbor. Move out the way. That's right. I'm trying to get to church. But I thank God, man. Such a such an awesome, awesome body of believers. Uh, I'm happy to uh, be where God called me to be in this season, mother. Amen. I am so grateful. Amen. So get ready to celebrate another year. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. You know, uh, you know, as we move forward in Christmas and Thanksgiving and birthdays and anniversaries and, you know, and I notice that uh, every year, you know, people say, well, we, you know, when I got this age, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. You know what? I, I, I believe God is blessing in reverse. Okay, let me let me explain that. Amen. I believe God will increase in your decrease. What seemed like a season of decrease, even for Word of God Christian Center, was a season of increase. COVID hit mother, it seemed like uh, people just scattered like the wind, but God increased. He increased many of us. God would never let your, what the enemy would cause you to see as a shortcoming, as a downfall. This is a season of overflow in your life. And I want y'all to receive that. Those are in our E audience today. Come on, let's thank God for those that are joining us via stream. Amen. But this is your season of increase God is increasing you what seems like and I thank God even for the Dave Ramsey uh, course that we started at the beginning of the year and I believe we're scheduled to do again this uh, coming season and we want y'all to connect with us because I guarantee you if you purpose and plan your life around what God has for you Amen. God will blow your mind. And what little that you think you had, God will say, I'm going to take that little that you sacrificed, that little that you gave away, that tithe, because everything in God's eye, come on somebody. We may be thinking we're giving a big thing, but God said, you know what? 
I got you. I'm going to take that, that decrease, what you feel is a decrease, and I'm going to increase it in your life. Amen. And I'm going to talk about that today in the book of Judges. We want to read this. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to the book of Judges. Amen. And we thank God for, uh, I'm telling you, it's a, it's a great season. We thank God for you. We thank God for our bishop. We pray for him as well. Amen. All our fellow pastors. I know y'all be sneaking in. But God bless you all. We love you. Amen. Uh, in this season. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to turn to Judges. 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 Everybody say Judges. Amen. How many books of the Bible are there? 66 books. I was, I was looking at my elder over there. I was expecting him to be the first one to answer. How many books of the Bible? 66 books. Amen. 66 great testaments, testimonies that God has given us. But Judges is, is, is really special. And it says here in verse number one, this chapter seven, and we're going to read, we're going to start at chapter seven. If we could just all stand for the reading of the word, uh, they were even gracious enough to put it on the screen for you. Praise the Lord. And it says here, then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the will of Harad, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are with thee are way too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hands has saved me. Verse 3, Now therefore go to proclaim to the ears of the people, saying, Whoever, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there the there returned of the people twenty and two thousand. And there remained ten thousand. Ten thousand. Verse four, and the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will try, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, and the same shall go with thee. And of whomever, whomsoever I say unto thee, these shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lapped of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shall thy set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink, and the number of them that lap, putting their hands to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down unto their knees to drink the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped, Will I save you and deliver the Midians, Midianites into thy hand and let all the other people go, every man unto his place and let all the people go, every man to his place. And the Lord said, by the 300 men that lapped pretty much like a dog, will I save you by the 300 men. 300 men father we just thank you right now you know how to decrease us to prepare us for great victory and increase only you god only you god only you god 
Hallelujah. Can trim everything that we don't need in our lives so that we can have a complete victory. In Jesus' name, come on, let's applaud God. Say, say, I'm ready for the victory. I'm ready, amen, to be increased. I'm ready for God's increase, honey. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. 2024. Come on, somebody. I can't wait to see. I can't wait, mother, to see the victories that this church that you going to have. Amen. God has said, I'm going to trim the fat. I'm going to get rid of some stuff in your life that you don't need. Amen. But God is getting ready in your life to increase you like never before. Amen. Come on. Let's thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. While we are yet live, I need somebody to call our e-member. Tell them to follow the instructions on his coffee table. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Come on, let's give him a hand praise. Hallelujah. That's okay if you're uh, rooting for Dallas. Let's give the Lord a hand praise if y'all y'all can y'all can praise like that y'all can clap your hands like that if y'all rooting for them but we talking about the lord we talking about the lord hallelujah amen praise the lord god bless the horns back there amen frederick you may take your seat for the glory of god amen it was reported that in this battle there were 135 Midianites arrayed against Israel, 135,000 men. Uh, can, can you imagine just for a moment, 135,000 men. And if you watched the Michigan game yesterday and looked at the stadium, that, that stadium can seat over 100,000 people. So can you imagine you got 300 men on the field against 135,000 men? And if you do the math, I think that percentage comes up to like your chance of winning is 0.002%. By yourself, you have a 0.002% chance of winning the battle. Look at your neighbor and say, it ain't always what it looked like. You got a point zero zero two 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 chance of winning. And how many know in, in, in math that two could go on forever? See, but I believe with God and me. See, you got to come on, somebody. I believe God was in the two. <laughs> he wasn't in the zero. He was in the two. So with God, the Bible says that all things are possible. So what God has trimmed off of their lives, God said, don't worry about what I'm trimming off of you. Worry about what I'm about to put in you. Hello. Because God is saying, I'm about to insert myself into the equation. Hello, somebody. You know, I'm reminded when, you know, you engraft something into a vine, you have to cut it. Am I right about it? You have to cut it. You have to, you have to cut the, uh, the, the, the branch to insert something into the, the, the vine. And what God has done with us, he said, I have inserted myself into your life. Because I realized that some of the victories that I've had in the past, it wasn't about me, sister Steph, it was about God. And I would never had those victories in my life had I not allowed God to insert himself into my situation. Now, can you imagine for a moment you had in this particular scripture, they had 22 thousand men leave at one time can you imagine what the other 10 felt like 
Can you imagine just for a moment that over half the army left? Two-thirds of that army walked away in fear. So what does that tell you? You can't take people into battle that's afraid. So what God was doing, so that's why you can't have anybody on your intercessory team. You can't have everybody that's, come on now, on your worship team. Because as long as there's fear, come on somebody, there's, there's come on, there, there, there's, there's room for the enemy in fear. So what God will do with us in many occasions, like uh, Gideon and uh, the 300, he remove, will remove those things that we don't need that's required for victory. And the percentage, the way it looks, see, this is why God say, uh, come in, we can't go by what it looks like. We can't go by what it feels like. Because the moment you go by what it looks like and what it feels like, you, you have ultimately lost the war and the victory already. You have eliminated God out of the equation. For those that are not taking notes, God will humble us before a great breakthrough. Can I say that again? God said, I'm going to humble them because if they win this battle themselves, a spirit of pride is going to come in. And oftentimes in life, you have one opportunity to work with God. And what God did not want to see is a spirit of pride to come in because, see, God knows his people. A whole generation died in the wilderness because of pride. God said, no longer will I have you die in the wilderness. Okay. I gave my heart to the Lord. And God began to prune my life. God prunes your life. God chastised those that he loved. God is ready to take you to the next level. Ask your neighbor, are you ready? Number two, write this down. What feels like a cut? What feels like a cut? Is only God getting me ready for an increase. In other words, whatever you decrease in your life. See, I had to decrease some stuff to be made whole. I had to decrease some stuff in my life to be made. I couldn't listen to, come on somebody. I couldn't listen to Luther Vandross, come on somebody. Some of that, oh, boy, it's quiet up in here today. There's some stuff I had to get rid of. And see, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it today where you see a lot of the saints, man, they go into the concert. Oh, I can't get no amens. Well, you know what? I don't judge anybody because maybe they're a lot more spiritually mature than I am. And they can handle that kind of stuff. But as for me and my house, I know what I can handle. And I can't listen to quiet storm 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Come on, somebody. And not have my mind, come on now, stayed on Jesus. Because eventually you're going to see something else you like in that quiet storm. Oh, I can't get no amens. So I have to allow God to cut me, to reduce me. Ask God, what is it? What is it? Yeah, prune me. What is it that you need? The Bible says to humble thyself under the mighty hand of God. We have to live a life of humility. And often we ask, how come we're not being increased? Because you haven't decreased. God can only increase where you have decreased. God can only increase where you have decreased. 
Note this. Please note this. God doesn't need your help. God doesn't require your help, but he requires your presence. God doesn't require your help. He could have done this all by himself, but he requires your presence. Why does he require your presence? Because we have to give God permission to operate in this earth. And thank God for our prayer at nine, our prayer lesson at nine o'clock given by the one and only Tylene Covington. Dealing with prayer. Gideon would have never got a solution had he not been praying. Prayer, prayer, prayer is the key to getting everything you need from God. It's kind of like I have the key. I've got my wife's key. And I got access to everything that she has access to. And likewise, she has access to everything that I have access to. Why? Because we talk. We have good conversations and we have challenging conversations. Amen. How many know when you, you get married, you're going to have some challenging conversations? You're married to God. How many challenging conversations have he had with you? We budgeting this month. I remember Pastor Lockett used to say TB. Everybody know what that is? Tight budget. Tight budget. He called tight budget month. And sometimes God will call a tight budget month on us. He might call a tight budget day on you. He might cause you to fast. He might cause you to go talk to somebody. And what is he doing? He's causing you to de decrease. Because a lot of time when God requires something of you, it's going to require you to decrease. And the problem is, mother, a lot of us don't want to decrease. Because to decrease means I got to give up something. It means I have to humble myself. It means I might have to look bad in front of people. Can you imagine these 300 men? They trusted not only Gideon, but they trusted God to the point to where they were going to stand against an army of 135,000 men. And they, you know, and I can imagine they were, they were ready for battle, but they understood the concept of war. And they knew that my chances of winning were 0.00%. We didn't, we don't, can you imagine somebody even thinking we don't stand a chance? But God, why are we standing here, God? Why are you standing there? God told me to stand here. Why are you giving that? God told me to give it. Why are you going there? Because God said, I don't understand why, but God said to be here. See, every, see we're not going to understand everything God tells us to do. Because some of the stuff God tells us to do don't make sense. It makes faith. It ain't going to make sense. But it does make faith. Because it takes faith to stand before 135,000 men. It takes faith to come, come on somebody, to do what God called you to do. It takes faith to go to a location where there's nobody and God says start a church. It takes faith, come on now, to pray for somebody that don't want to be prayed for. It takes faith. And God said, you know what? Your obedience is better than sacrifice. If you just obey, can you imagine? Gideon could have said, no, ain't no way. You know, you know I've been leading these people all these years, God. It just, there's, there's just no way that we're going to make this battle. 
See, in a lot of stuff, we're going to just have to trust God. God say, trust me. Trust me. Just stay present. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to stay present. You got to stay present. Some folks say, I'm, I'm present right now on my couch. Well, that's good. If that's the only way you can make it to church. But if God gave you a car, and you've been praying for that car, and you know, well, God gave me that car. What are you using it for? Let it bring you to church. You prayed for that house. Let it do what it's supposed to do. But let God do what he's going to do in your life. How many times have we ignored God and went for the increase instead of the decrease? Sometimes the increase is the easy way of doing it. And how many of us, mother, we always seek the easy way? Some of us got family members that's, that's been trying to seek the easy way for 40 and 50 years. We call that a get over mentality. Sometimes we get saved and we, we come on somebody, we, we bring that same mentality in the church. And God said, I need to decrease you to increase you. I thank God for being able to be humble before the Lord. Can I, can I read that point again? God doesn't require your help. But he does require your presence. Let's go to Isaiah real quick. Isaiah. I'm going to pick it up at verse number 54. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Isaiah 54. When you get there, they say amen. All right. Y'all beat me there. Isaiah 54. Let's pick it up at verse number 17. And we all know this very familiar verse of scripture, but I wanted to wanted you to lay eyes on it. It says, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Now, I don't believe that the children of Israel could have experienced in Isaiah 54 if they didn't experience a Judges, Judges chapter 7. You follow what I'm saying? See, God takes us from experience to experience to let us know that he is always with you. We should never, we're, we're New Testament saints. I, I, and I love how Hebrews broke it down. He said, man, we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, but those witnesses never received the promise. We receive the promise. You hear me, Elder? We receive the promise. But yet and still, oftentimes, Mother, we walk in fear in the face of faith. And God gives us a choice. And we go back to the Word of God. And I, I've seen churches just tag, get tore up when they say you read the scripture and everybody run around the church. But a percentage of those, I believe, as the, as it, just like in Judges, two-thirds were afraid. Two-thirds, when he said, excuse the, for everybody that want to go home that's, that's fearful, two-thirds of that army walked away. Two-thirds walked away because they were fearful and afraid to face the battle. And how many of us have walked away from a battle where God is trying to get you the revelation that no weapon formed against you will prosper? 
You can never walk in this revelation if you never face the battle. And how many of us have walked away from a battle? Come on, somebody. Jam, the Lord told me to move. I've had people come here and they said the Lord sent them here. But when the challenge came on, it come on somebody. And it was time to change. It was time to decrease some stuff off their life. Guess what? They walked out with the baggage. Came in with the baggage and God said it's time to get rid of the baggage. But they didn't want to get rid of the baggage, so they left with the baggage. All we can do is pray. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. What is there to fear in the face of adversity, knowing that God is saying that this is your heritage, this is your inheritance? And the Bible says that uh, a will cannot be let unless there be bloodshed. Jesus, here's God saying, this is your inheritance. Jesus, come on, now we move to the New Testament. And God said, Jesus shed his blood for you, gave you the covenant, gave you everything you need. What is there to fear? And we don't want to, come on now, introduce or lead someone to the Lord that needs to be saved. We don't want to pray for the stranger or the mother in the street. We don't want to go to the prisons. Why? Because we too busy. We're so increased that we can't decrease. I believe some of my greatest victories came out of those times walking by faith into the prison system. Walking into the high school to mentor young men. Some of your greatest victories, some of, come on somebody. Some of you guys are looking, you're looking for uh, the quick fix and you're looking for uh, the, the, the quick solution to the problem or to the issue. And God is saying decrease. Humble yourself. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me. Not you, but God. Man, we need to learn how to let go of some stuff. Gideon was able to let go of some stuff. In fact, he let go of a lot of people. All the way down to 300 men. 300 men. Let's go to Isaiah 59. Another great scripture. Isaiah 59. Just trying to walk you through some victory, y'all. Verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. Come on, somebody. My spirit, the spirit, his spirit, the Holy Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Y'all hear me? So when the enemy comes in like a flood, and it's not your name they fear, but it's the name of the God that you serve. Why? Because we have decreased. He is my testimony. He is my shield. He is my buckler. He's, the, come on somebody. He is the God that I serve. Can I read that one more time, y'all? So, so shall they fear the name of the Lord. Not my name, not your name. 
the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will lift up a standard against him. You think about this, saints. How many of us are holding up a standard? All we got to do is hold the bloodstained banner. All we got to do is declare the name of the Lord Jesus. I, ain't, I don't have to declare any other name. Just his name. You know, uh, what, what did they say? Uh, I think it was uh, the government. They said, you didn't build this. No, we're, you're right. We didn't build it. God did. Because it was God that gave the man the wisdom to do it. So technically, no, we didn't build it. God did it. You didn't marry your wife. God gave you the wisdom and the, come on, foresight to see that she was the woman of God for you. Amen. I didn't, God gave me that choice. But God gave me the sight to see. Oh, Lord have mercy. She just had to be about her father's business to be seen. See, that's the thing. We got to be about our father's business to be seen and to see. Oh, I can't get no amen. And we wonder why things don't work out because we're not about our father's business. You take care of your father's business and he'll take care of your business. Why do we tithe and offering? Why do we pay tithe and offering? Yes, to be obedient to his word, but also so that we won't walk in pride. It ain't your business. We pray for that job. We ask God for the career. God blessed us with the job, the business, or the career. Then we can't pay tithe. What are we saying? God, I got this. Well, if you got it, you got it. My wife told y'all, y'all, she tell you our testimony all the time. And I, I walk, I live my life on this. It ain't my business, it's God's business. And if God wants the business, he can have the business. Because it's his anyway. I just thank God that he allowed me to be a steward over the resources that he's given us. And God will never let you be the steward if he's not allowed to decrease it. Oh, I can't get no amens. Are y'all ready for increase? Yeah. Now, see, let me, let me ask that question a different way. Are you ready? See, I don't want you to just think of uh, material stuff. I want you to think of spiritual stuff. Are you ready for the increase? Because some of us have held on to too much stuff. And God's been trying to, they say, a camel can't go through the eye of a needle. And I, I got a revelation. I heard somebody talk about the, the eye of a needle. He wasn't talking about the needle that you thread with, right? But they were, they were talking about uh, the eye of the needle. I think they used to cleanse the camels. And they call it the eye of the needle where the camel would walk through. Right? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Do your own study then. Amen. <laughs> but that's what it was. Right. So you think about this. There's some stuff that God is trying to get us to go through. And you have to humble yourself. Thank you for teaching my lesson. You have to humble yourself to get through it. See, you will never be the woman of God God called you to be if you're not willing to let go and, and go through some stuff with God. I didn't, I thought I was, but I was so happy when the man started prophesying to me uh, about 20 years ago, started prophesying uh, maybe more than that. But, you know, I was so excited because, you know, uh, normally, you know, when the prophet comes, you got 2,000 people at the church, you know, you're, you're waiting to hear a word and 
you know, they call everybody else around you but you. So I was excited. First time somebody really called, you know, I'm driving in the car and the man prophesying and he's he's talking about, yeah, I see you getting to know God in all kinds of different areas. You're you're experiencing God. And I see you like you're standing on a table and you every time you you bust a vase, amen, a different characteristic of God comes out and you get to know that 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 character of God. I was so excited until I started experiencing the prophecy. I was excited because I didn't know I would have to go through to, to know who God is. God said, okay, you, you've, been, you've been teaching and preaching on my God shall supply all my needs. Let me, let, let me show you that I'm a God that supply your needs. Let me take your job. Let me decrease you. That the only, the only resource that you get is what comes from me. And it was like manna from heaven. I decreased in humility. God increased us financially. Oh, I can't get no amen. Some of us are not where we are because we have not uh, managed, learned how to manage God's resources. Oh, I can't get no amen. Can I, can I say that again? Some of us are not where we are financially because we have not learned how to manage God's resources. I don't need Dave Ramsey. Yes, you do. I like, I like how Dave, Dave don't play with nobody. How are you going to come to a millionaire and tell the millionaire how to manage his, his resources? And you're not even a thousandaire. I don't, I don't agree with the step, the, the, the seven baby steps. I just skipped from one to one to five. That's like going looking in the Bible and say, God, you know what? Like my professor said. Oh, you don't agree with that part of the Bible? That page, just take it away. Just get rid of it. I said, well, wait a minute. It says, you know, I ended up getting a C out of that class. Wait a minute. The Bible says here, clearly, fornication is a sin. But if you find love in that tree, that's okay. Wait a minute. That's not what the Bible says. God created Adam and Eve. Come on, somebody. And y'all, this was this was 94. I get a headache coming out that class. We got to hold up the standard God has given us. And you can't come on, somebody. Some of us would have just gave in and shut our mouths. I'll take my C proudly. Messed up my grade point average. Messed it up. But I stood on the truth. <laughs> Messed up my grade point average. Man, I was like, oh, man. yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right, let's go to Timothy. Second Timothy. Go to 2 Timothy, and I'm, I'm closing. I'm closing on this, y'all. Some of y'all want me to close anyway. I'm closing. I'm closing. 2 Timothy 3. Thank you, Justice. Justice said, take your time. That's, I, I can translate. I can translate baby tongues. He said, take your time. Don't be pinching them back there either. Second Timothy three. And it says this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to their parents. 
unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despiser of those that are good. Goes on, it says traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, sitting in church, having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. The Bible says, from such turn away. But that's my friend. God is trying to decrease you so he can increase you. He said, turn away. You know, there's, and let me, let me tell y'all, there's a purpose that God says, turn away. Can I, can I share something with you? Because some of the same people I turned away from during my early stage of my Christian uh, uh, youth, those are the same people God matured me enough to go back and usher into the kingdom. I can't get no amens. God knows how to give an increase out of you. And God says some of the same people that are your friend, really, they're, they're your enemy. You just don't see it. So that's your tight buddy. But that same person is being used by the enemy to keep you out of God's presence. And God said, you know what? I don't need your help, but I need your presence. Because, in, see, as long as you stay in God's presence, God said, I can increase you. I'm going to decrease you, but I'm going to increase you. Okay, y'all. For of this sort are they which reap or, or creep into houses. Oh, Lord. And lead captive. Silly women, laden with sin, led away with divers lust, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Oh, Lord, have mercy. But my pastor said that, but I don't get it. Ever learning, but never coming to the truth. Because you won't move yourself out the way. Sometimes we are our own worst enemy. Because we don't know how to decrease. You know, I, I, I love it. I love the old church where, the, where the mother, they would go to the mothers. A lot of the sisters, I mean, we had a young church. You remember, we had a young church. And thank God for the, the mature mothers that they can go to and ask advice. And if a sister came to me for advice, I go tell them, talk to first lady. I don't know, because there's a motive you coming to me. I ain't going to tell you the right thing. I'm too young in Christ. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Okay. For you to increase, you have to decrease. Your increase comes from the Father, not from the man. Oftentimes we'll tell people, come on, I can't, I got to close this out. I'm about to go into place that y'all might cut me off. It says here, ever learning, verse number seven, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning. And never it don't even sound right. You're ever learning, but never. You're never able to come to the truth. Thank you. Because you think about it, we can read, but never comprehend. And the truth, thank you, honey, will always set you free. See, that's why the devil would love for you to come to church, but never learn. Because if you never learn, learn or come to the knowledge of the truth, see, the truth, God's truth will always set you free. And the enemy don't want you to be free. He don't mind if you learn. 
but he don't want that applied knowledge. Okay, I got to go. Everybody stand on your feet. I got to go. I got to go. I felt the old pastoral teaching just come up on me. That, you know, that teaching that would challenge you to live and go to the next level. That, that teaching that would challenge a single man how to be single and saved. A single lady how to be single and saved. That type of preaching and teaching that would show you how to come out and live a sin-free life. I still believe you can live a sin-free life. Am I the only one? I used to say that, and sometimes I boggle my own mind. Why did I say that? Because with God, all things are possible. You know, I have a point zero 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 two percent chance of being saved. No, let's let's take the two out of it. I got a zero percent chance of being saved without Christ. Zero percent. But with Christ, come on, somebody. All of a sudden, my eyes started changing. But they say, hey, man, I saw you in the club last night, but my eyes are changing. I heard you cut somebody out yesterday, but my eyes are changing. Because I still got Christ. You just haven't yielded. You like you like the, the Gideon army. You're afraid to give up stuff, thinking what you might lose. But when I lost that fear, when you lose the fear of decrease, sometimes Jen, that's what it is. We fear decrease. God, I, it took me so many years to get all this stuff. God said, can you give it up for me today? Can you give it to me today? And how many people are walking around trying to hold on to people that are not necessary in their life? Father, we just thank you right now. There's someone that's listening to this message and they've held on out of fear of losing whatever it is, relationship, finances, house, car. But God is saying if you can decrease I'm saying in the, in the aspect of humbling yourself. If you can humble yourself. And even as the word has declared, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then the Bible says you will hear from heaven and God will heal your land so God thank you for healing us today thank you for delivering us today as we humble ourselves before you God we humble our walk we humble our talk we humble our spirits before you to say thank you God if we don't if we don't know you God if anyone here don't know you as their personal Lord and Savior, just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins, for I am a sinner. Save me now, Lord. Save me now. Let me decrease so you may increase in my life. And it is so. It is so. I am saved. I'm saved in Jesus' name. I'm saved. Make that declaration. Say, I'm saved. 
in Jesus' name. I'm saved in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If, if this is your first time giving your heart to the Lord, I'm going to challenge you after this broadcast, amen, that you call two and three people and you let them know that you are saved. And my next challenge is that you connect with a local church. It is so important, honey, that we connect with a church that is alive, that teaches the word of God, amen, that is going to not compromise and play with our sin, uh, but will teach us the truth. Of course, I'm a little biased here at Word of God Christian Center. I don't, I don't really care if you're an e-member or if you're local here, I'm going to encourage you to come. Uh, to 426 Baywood Road. They're going to put information on the screen for you. Amen. But if you're out of state, and I know we have some that watches in Florida, amen. If you don't have a local church, I want to encourage you now, amen, to connect. Connect. Find you a good word church. Amen. A good balanced church. A uh, pastor that won't compromise with your sin. Amen. We love you with, lo with the love of the Lord. We say God bless you on today. They're going to put information on the screen for you, and we're going to close out. God bless you. We love you. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand, praise.